unbeaten heavyweight contender Jarrell Miller has been very outspoken in the press, I think it's fair to say. And he was asked recently about WBC heavyweight world champion Deontay Wilder and whether or not he thinks Wilder would consider fighting him sometime in the near future. So I'm going to quote Jarrell Miller directly here and give you his response. He says, I highly doubt it. Not until I get a belt. Al Heyman took an interest in me from what I heard and I'm definitely going to knock out Deontay. He knows that. I'm going like a year or so back when Deontay won the belt. And they were producing all these press releases that said, oh, he's so marketable. He's the champ and blah, blah, blah. I was like, who in the hell put this press kit together? Because no way in hell is Deontay marketable. He was lucky to keep the belt for the whole entire year. Americans don't even know who he is. Alabama barely know who he is. And you can see that right now. The guy's following is still limited for a guy who's been champion over a year. Even his own fans are tired of him fighting these bums you never even heard of, constantly getting injured. I mean, that's a part of the sport. But all round, Deontay Wilder, to me, is a fraud at this point. The fans and the media are starting to pick up on it. But this is what a lot of boxing experts have been saying from the beginning. We're going to see how real he is. The top, the only top guy he fought is Berman Stavern, and Stavern didn't even show up that night. I mean, he capitalized off that. I get it. But like, damn, being champion for a whole year, full title defenses, and he didn't even fight no tough guys. Those are the words of Brooklyn heavyweight contender, unbeaten heavyweight contender, Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Now, I have to say, I do like Jarrell Miller. I like his personality. I think he's funny. I like the trash talking. And he's put together some wins. His last win was a stoppage over Fred Cassie. But you have to bear in mind that Jarrell Miller trash talks everybody. I haven't heard Jarrell Miller say a good word about any of the heavyweights out there in recent memory, he was trash talking Anthony Joshua, calling him, calling him a hype job. He's recently trash talking Luis Ortiz, saying he doesn't see what all the fuss is about. He was trash talking Tyson. F He's been trash talking all these big name heavyweights out there. So you can only expect him really to trash talk Deontay Wilder as well and pick out all the flaws and all the other heavyweights and not really talk about their strengths. I am one of those people who does not buy the notion that Berman Stavern wasn't 100% when he fought Deontay Wilder. I just don't buy it. He claims he was dehydrated. Well, they were testing him for dehydration after a 12-round fight. What? Everybody's going to be dehydrated after a 12-round fight. What the hell does that prove? If you want to prove how dehydrated somebody is, you have to test them for dehydration before the fight then you'll be able to you know come to some conclusive evidence not after the fight that's ridiculous <laughs> so I throw that totally out and also Berman Stavern has got a history of you know coming up with excuses when things don't go his way like when he fought Ray Austin and this was an old Ray Austin a 40 year old Ray Austin who was beating Berman Stavern Soundly outboxing him until he finally got caught. I think it was in the ninth or 10th round when Stavern finally caught him. He was outboxing Stavern in that fight. An old man. A slow old man at that. <clears throat> and after the fight, Berman Stavern said, well, I was sick. I had a fever. That was the reason for that performance. Now look, sometimes fighters do go into the ring and they genuinely, genuinely do have ailments and illnesses and so on and so forth, which hamper their performance. But with Berman Stavern, I've noticed the pattern of whenever he produces a lackluster performance, he wants to bring out some excuse. And I remember when the Berman Stavern Deontay Wilder fight was made, I said, don't be surprised if Deontay Wilder wins this fight on points because. I had seen the Ray Austin fight and I thought if Ray Austin can do that, this old slow man with his height and reach, then a young Deontay Wilder 
should be able to replicate that, particularly with Mark Breland in his corner, a guy who's not a dummy, a guy who's a cronk fighter, a guy who's one of the greatest amateurs in American history. He, he knows what his fighter has to do to beat Berman Stavern, stay on the outside and keep it long. Berman Stavern, in the Ray Austin fight, showed very poor head movement, absolutely no ability to cut off the ring, and just very, very poor skill set on the front foot. That's what he showed in the Ray Austin fight. So I thought, that's probably what he's going to do in the Wilder fight too. And the only way that he's going to beat Wilder is if Wilder gets too involved with him. If Wilder keeps it long, he's going to win the fight. And that's not factoring in dehydration or any of this other stuff. So I do think that people who totally dismiss Wilder's win over Berman Stavern are... I think not giving Wilder enough credit. And I think they're they're reaching a little bit with that one. As far as the rest of Wilder's opponents, they certainly haven't been top tier. I mean, we saw what Anthony Joshua just did to Eric Molina. It has to be said, I think Eric Molina tried a lot harder in the Wilder fight than he did in the Joshua fight. But still, it's the same guy. And Joshua was just able to wipe him out with ease. He also fought Johan Duopa. Now, Duopa is a tough guy. And I know he just got knocked out by Povetkin, but that was on like two days notice or something. He wasn't even in training yet. <laughs> it just literally pulled him out of the crowd. He was in Russia to watch the fight. He wasn't in there to fight. And they pulled him out of the crowd. He thinks it was a setup. But at the end of the day, he took the money. So he knows he only has himself to blame. He said that publicly. So, yeah, uh, he fought Duopa, who I think is a tough, solid, maybe fringe world contender, European level guy. He also fought Arta Spilka. And Spilka, again, a fringe contender, not a legit top 10 guy. So, yeah, I, I can definitely see the criticism. There is some valid criticism there for Deontay Wilder's opponents. But then again, he was supposed to fight Povetkin. He would have fought Povetkin, but Povetkin failed a drug test. So you can't all blame it on Deontay Wilder. If it wasn't for Povetkin failing that drug test, we would have found out what Deontay Wilder is really all about had he managed to fight Povetkin. So I do think Jerome Miller is being, you know, a little biased here and a little one-sided. But again, you have to expect that from Big Baby because he likes to trash talk and talk down all the other opposition. And I've spoken previously about the psychology of certain fighters. Tyson Fury, for example, the first time that he was taken over to the Klitschko camp, he came back from that camp and he was interviewed and asked about Vladimir Klitschko and asked about the camp and the interviewer said, were you impressed by Vladimir? Were you impressed by what you saw out there? And Tyson Fury said, no, I wasn't impressed at all, to be honest. He was just another bare bum in a shower. I wasn't impressed, just a guy with a pair of box boxing gloves on. I wasn't impressed. And this was long before he was scheduled to fight Vladimir Klitschko. This is like a couple of years before that. Two or three years before. And even then, he was like, nah, wasn't impressed by Vladimir. Just, just another guy with boxing gloves on, hitting a bag. No big deal. You see, that is the attitude that won Tyson Fury the world heavyweight title. He didn't go over there and, you know, get starstruck. He wasn't in awe of Vladimir Klitschko. He just shrugged his shoulders and was like, he was probably looking at the negatives in Klitschko as much as the positives. And that mindset, if applied the right way, can take you a long way in boxing. Obviously, you don't want to underestimate people, but you never want to be in awe of another fighter. You always want to be looking at the weaknesses and thinking to yourself, my strengths can exploit this guy's weaknesses. And I guess that's what Jerome Miller is doing, a similar kind of mindset. He's thinking, okay, yeah, Wilder can punch, but I can do this, that, and the other, and he can't do this, this, and this. So in his comp competitive mind, he's looking at the weaknesses of his potential opponents, of his rivals. And he's thinking, I can exploit those. It's a good attitude because it means he's going to go in there with self-belief if he fights the Deontay Wilder or an Anthony Joshua or any of these guys. So drop your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you feel about Jerome Miller's comments here. It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.